So everyone, I've just bumped into Justin, who's, um, I was just saying to the ladies from Ecrofruit that I owe, owe you, you and um, Gloria um, such, such a, a, a heap of thanks because you saved us when I did my trip, trip through Africa. You just picked us up when we were in a right old state, when we, when we got into South Africa. So I've got a lot of time for, for Justin and his association. Justin, just tell everyone who you are and what you do. Sure. Great to see you, Max. And by the way, it was an absolute pleasure to have you in South Africa and we hope you'll come back again soon. I'd love to. Sure. Oh, love yeah, so I'm with the Citrus Growers Association of Southern Africa. We represent citrus farmers in South Africa, Iswatini, Zimbabwe, Botswana and Namibia. The last two having joined our association very recently, so we're very excited about that. Hopefully Mozambique will come on board soon and then we'll be truly regional represent representative and um, basically doing market access um, and those sort of activities for, for the growers. And, and over the last two, three years, I've lost count, but we've done feels like about half a dozen broadcasts. Um, and, and one thing that I've really learned from you is, and, and your South African colleagues, is, is make a plan, have a plan. Crikey, you and your growers have gone through some, some stuff over, over the last two, three years. Just, just some, give us a summary. Where, where are you today? Where, where are we, um, yeah. 2023, just come to the end of. How's the season been for you all? Yeah, so if we rewind to 21 and 22, they were disastrous seasons. After probably 10 or 15 really good seasons. Yeah. So we, we can't complain too much. But um, yeah, 20, 21, 22, what really killed us was the freight rates um, and the, the, the problems with freight around the world due to COVID mostly. Yep. Um, but apart from that, we had some really hectic weather events um, and, uh, and, and, and we had some issues in terms of the ports, uh, performance. So our logistics were pretty difficult. Um, our production was still pretty good. We still had the volumes, um, but we just weren't getting the return back on the farm. Yep. Fortunately, 2023 has been a whole lot better because I think if we had a third year like that, we'd have lost maybe half of our members. Really? really? It was really that bad. Oh, Four wow. out of five growers made a loss in 2022. So, so the guys were really in a difficult hole. And um, fortunately, 2023 means that they've clawed back a bit of their reserves and they're back on a good footing again. Uh, the markets were good. Um, our produce was good, um, logistics was better, Not still not back to pre-COVID levels, uh, okay. the freight rates are still a bit heightened, but uh, a lot better than what they had been before. So the guys are in a better position and we, when, when, the, when the growers are happy, then our life's a bit easier. Uh, and yeah. as, as Kathy mentioned in her, in her uh, State of the Union speech, it's so difficult to predict anything in the sector, as we, as, as we all know, but even more so for your growers, because it's not like you're, you're planting leeks you're planting a plant that's not going to come to fruition for, for years down the line. So you, you have to have a, you're, you're having to take a long, long term strategy. Where, where is South Africa in that respect? Because when we've done broadcasts in the past, there's been certain areas where there's been a lot of planting going in, but also a lot of sacrifice. Like grapefruit, I remember, was a, was a, although you always like grapefruit, it. It was falling, falling by, the, by the way. So, yeah. so where are you with um, the, the, the likes of growth and planting? Yeah, yeah. Is that quite positive? So, well, the last 10 years have been incredible plantings in, in lemons and, and, and mandarins, uh, basically, those two sectors. And, and, and those plantings are really coming through now. Last, last year, we had a 20% increase in our mandarin exports. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those are quite a large, a high base already. So, we've got a, a thing we call Vision 260. Um, so, at the moment, we, uh, we export 160 million cartons from South Africa, Southern Africa. And uh, that will increase by 100 million cartons in the next 10 years. I mean, the, the, the trees are on the ground, if, if nothing happens, that's how much fruit they'll be available to export in 2032. So, so Vision 260 says, how are we going to get there? You know, a lot of people, when you give it to them, they say, 260 million, we're all dead. You know, it's the end of the road for us. And what we say is, well, imagine if we can make that happen. Imagine if we can get to 260. So the Vision's got five projects, one around increasing demand, where we're going to sell the stuff, who's going to take it, you know, where can we get market share, etc. And then the next three are logistics. Logistics. Yeah, Where's the warehousing? Yeah, you know, how can we warehouse it? How can we transport a road and rail to the port? How the port's going to work? So that's those three projects, and the last project around shipping, uh, ensuring that we can sustainably ship at prices that are reasonable back to the ground. Uh, and then cross-cutting, you have communication, information, and lobbying, uh, and stakeholder engagement. So, so there, those are eight projects, and it's really exciting to be involved in an industry that's got this growth potential, um, and to sell that to government, sell that to the uh, value chain partners, because Citrus Growth Association is not going to make that happen alone. No. We're going to have all of our value chain partners have to be 
part of Vision 260. Uh, to, to make but, but that I and and I, I remember in previous conversations you were um, excited or you were grossly excited by the likes of the Russian market and also the Asian market. But crikey, that's all, all, all changing. So if you got this growth coming through, well, that, well, that's um, trying to um, open your box of trade secrets. Who are you selling to? Well, Where, where's the market? Well, strangely enough, Russia is great. Ah. We've grown our volumes in Russia over the last four years. Now you might ask me, well, are you supporting the various geopolitical <laughs> situations? And, and and the truth is, the Russian people have to eat, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and food and, and medical yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. supplies etc. Are, are not san uh, under sanctions. So so the Russian uh, market's been really good for us. Yeah. Um, we, we have various markets. We target in the U.S. market where we stand right now. We only have access from the Western Cape and the Northern Cape. Yeah. Huge potential for the rest of the country to send more okay. beautiful mandarins into this market. Yeah. Uh, Indian market, we're scratching the surface in India. Uh, okay. Big potential, big population, okay. vegetarians, uh, disposable income increasing. Uh, markets like Vietnam, uh, we don't have access there. Japan, we need to improve our access to Japan. Yeah. So there are potential okay. markets there. And um, and that's our job now, is to work with our government, um, who do all the negotiations, and work with our, our value chain stakeholders to say, how can we improve the, into the US? How can we improve into in India, etc., to get to that? So we've got a, like a big brother model where we look down and say, okay, if we were a big brother, we would send X amount into each market. Now, how are we going to get there? Yeah. Okay. And so that's the and, and how can the, the likes of the IFPA, and how could this network help you, the South African growers? How can we help you? Yeah, so the IFPA is all around advocacy. We heard it today. So it's all about talking to, to people in the trade, talking to governments to make it happen. I mean, the U.S. is very irritating and frustrating for us because we were ahead of the, the Uruguay and Argentina and them in terms of access applications, and they actually relied on our science to get their access, and we're still sitting behind some uh, meat trade irritants, uh, which means that we can't we can't access this market from this side again. And importers are crying out for the fruit, and it's not that we um, uh, uh, compete at all. With the local produce, we count a season. So yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, California, Florida, etc., should be really welcoming good quality fruit into their markets because that keeps customers loyal to the category yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, throughout the year. Yep, yeah. Okay. So that'd be your shout out, America. Let us in. Exactly. Uh, abolish that red tape. Okay. Exactly. So, so Justin, th thank you. It's always great to catch up with you. Um, South African citrus. If, if you haven't been, just you, you have to visit. You have to experience it. It's a it's a great community. And the one thing that I've seen over this, this last four or five years is how resilient you've all, all been. And a lot of that's all credit to you. Um, are you still banned from mountain biking? Uh, I'm actually still. Uh, stupidity runs in my family, so I still mountain bike despite my broken leg, etc. Um, yeah, you got to keep the weight off. Apart from eating well, as Kathy was telling us earlier. Uh, but no, you need to exercise and all that sort of stuff. So, You're yeah. amazing, man. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Max.